Imagine creating an account on a new website. You provide your email address and set a password that you are confident and you would not forget. What about the website owner? How securely are they going to store your password? For website administrators, they have three alternatives. They can either store the passwords in a plain text format. They can encrypt the passwords using an encryption and decryption key. Or they can store the passwords in a hash value. Let's have a look at each of these. When a password is stored in plain text format, it is considered to be the most unsafe option since anyone in the company can read your passwords. A single hack and a data server breach will expose all the account's credentials without needing any extra effort. To counter this, owners can encrypt the passwords and keep them in the servers as a second alternative. But that would mean they also have to store the decryption key somewhere on their servers. In the event of a data breach or the server hack, both the decryption key and encrypted passwords will be leaked, thus making it a single point of failure. What if there was an option to store the passwords after scrambling them completely, but with no way to decrypt them? This is where hashing comes to play. Since only the hashed values are stored in the server, no encryption is needed. With no plain text passwords to protect, your credentials are safe from the website administrators. Considering all the pros, hashed passwords are the industry standard when it comes to storing credentials nowadays. Hey everyone, this is Bible from Simply Learn. Welcome to this video on what is hashing. Let's see the topics that we need to cover today. We understand what is hashing and the base concept behind its implementation. We move on to hash functions and then take a look at the guidelines that need to be followed when setting the algorithm among other things. In the end, we take a look into how we can further strengthen hash values and make them more resistant to being cracked. Before getting too deep into the topic, Let's get a brief overview of how hashing works. Hashing is the process of scrambling a piece of information or data beyond recognition. We can achieve this by using hash functions, which are essentially algorithms that perform mathematical operations on the main plain text. The value generated after passing the plain text information through the hash function is called the hash value, digest, or in general, just the hash of the original data. While this may sound similar to encryption, the major difference is hashes are meant to be irreversible. No decryption key can convert a digest back to its original value. However, a few hashing algorithms have been broken due to the increase in computational complexity of today's new generation computers and processors. There are new algorithms that stand the test of time and are still in use among multiple areas for password storage, identity verification, etc. Like we discussed earlier, websites use hashing to store the user's passwords. So how do they make use of these hash passwords? When a user signs up to create a new account, the password is then run through the hash function and the resulting hash value is stored on the servers. So the next time a user comes to log into the account, the password he enters is passed through the same hash function and compared to the hash stored on the main server. If the newly calculated hash is the same as the one stored on the website server, the password must have been correct because according to hash functions terminology, same inputs will always provide the same outputs. If the hashes do not match, then the password entered during login is not the same as the password entered during the signup, hence the login will be denied. This way, no plain text passwords get stored preventing both the owner from snooping on user data and protecting users' privacy in the unfortunate event of a data breach or a hack. Apart from password storage, hashing can also be used to perform integrity checks. When a file is uploaded on the internet, the file's hash value is generated and it is uploaded along with the original information. When a new user downloads the file, he can calculate the digest of the downloaded file using the same hash function. When the hash values are compared, if they match, then file integrity has been maintained and there has been no data corruption. Since so much important information is being passed onto the hash function, we need to understand how they work. A hash function is a set of mathematical calculations operated on two blocks of data. The main input is broken down into two blocks of similar size. The block size is dependent on the algorithm that is being used. Hash functions are designed to be one-way. 
they shouldn't be reversible at least by design some algorithms like the previously mentioned md5 have been compromised but most secure algorithms are being used today like the shf mlf algorithms the digest size is also dependent on the respective algorithm being used md5 has a digest of 128 bits while sh256 has a digest of 256 bits this digest must always be the same for the same input irrespective of how many times the calculations are carried out this is a very crucial feature since comparing the hash value is the only way to check if the data is untouched as the functions are not reversible there are certain requirements of a hash function that need to be met before they are accepted while some of them are easy to guess others are placed in order to preserve security in the long run the hash function must be quick enough to encrypt large amounts of data at a relatively fast pace but it also shouldn't be very fast running the algorithm on all cylinders makes the functions easy to boot force and a security liability there must be a balance to allow the hash function to handle large amounts of data and not make it ridiculously easy to boot force by running through all the possible combinations the hash function must be dependent on each bit of the input the input can be text audio video or any other file extension if a single character is being changed it doesn't matter how small that character may be the entire digest must have a distinctly different hash value this is essential to create unique digests for every password that is being stored but what if two different users are using the same password since the hash function is the same for all users both the digests will be the same this is called a hash collision you may think this must be a rare occasion where two users have exactly the same password but that is not the case we have techniques like salting that can be used to reduce these hash collisions as we will discuss later in this video you would be shocked to see the most used passwords of 2020 all of these passwords are laughably insecure and since many people use the same passwords repeatedly on different websites hash collisions risk are more common than one would expect let's say the hash functions find two users having the same password how can they store both the hashes without messing up the original data this is where salting and peppering come to play salting is the process of adding a random keyword to the end of the input before it is passed on to the hash function this random keyword is unique for each user on the system and it is called the salt value or just the salt so even if two passwords are exactly the same the salt value will differ and so will their digest there is a small problem with this process though since the salt is unique for each user they need to be stored in the database along with the passwords and sometimes even in plain text to speed up the process of continuous verification if the server is hacked then the hashes will need to be brute forced which takes a lot of time but if they receive the salts as well the entire process becomes very fast this is something that peppering aims to solve peppering is the process of adding a random string of data to the input before passing them to the hash function but this time the random string is not unique for each user it is supposed to be common for all users in the database and the extra bit added is called the pepper in this case the pepper is in stored on the servers it is mostly hard coded onto the website source code since it's going to be the same for all credentials this way even if the servers get hacked they will not have the right pepper needed to crack into all the passwords many websites use a combination of salting and peppering to solve the problem of hash collision and bolster security since brute force takes such a long time many hackers avoid taking the effort the returns are mostly not worth it and the possible combinations of using both salting and peppering is humongous hope you learned something interesting today feel free to ask us in the comments section if you have any questions and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this thank you for watching Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.